Dear friends of human spaceflight, our channel has changed a lot. This is the first episode provided to you by the new team, and last week I introduced myself and a lot of you responded saying that I needed to stop looking away from the camera. Thanks to our good friends at Video Production Academy, we now have the equipment to keep my eyes squarely on you, the audience, because for some reason, some of you folks like to have me just... Anyway, today we're talking about the new space race between the US-based NASA together with the Canadian and European Space Agency versus the Chinese Space Agency in cooperation with the Russian Space Agency, Roscosmos. Like before, the space race is aiming towards the moon again. Who will get there first? Who is going to have the first moon bases? The stakes are high. So high, it's almost 240,000 miles, almost 400,000 kilometers from the ground. Has China already won this new space race? Let's have a look and see what's already happened and what we assume to be coming in this fascinating competition between the East and the West. Lots to cover this episode, so stay tuned. A space race between the United States and its opponent. It sounds familiar, right? We have seen this once already, or at least you could hear and read about it as it happened many decades ago. The USSR was the competitor of the US then. They won the first matchups by sending the first satellite in 1957 and the first cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin in 1961 to Earth orbit. It was a complete shock and a big shame for the Western world. After Kennedy's famous speech, they started to work incredibly hard to overtake their Soviet competitors and send astronauts to the moon first. And they succeeded. In 1969, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong stepped onto the surface of the Earth's orbiting companion. All this happened over 50 years ago. Since then, we humans have been stuck in the proximity of Earth in the low Earth orbit region for decades. We built several space stations, space shuttles flew, but for the real space nerds, it just took way too long. No one ever flew over the altitude of 600 kilometers. Our long wait is over. At last, it has been decided that men and women of the planet Earth will return to the moon. The program is called Artemis. The main actor is NASA. But this time, the ESA, the CSA, and even JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, is taking part in this epic journey. Okay, great. Let's go, as they say. But how fast? And I'm not talking about translunar injection velocity here to send a spacecraft to the moon. Remember, JFK presented the Moon Program announcement speech in 1962. In only seven years in the year of the target, 1969, it had been achieved. The mighty Saturn V, the Apollo spaceship, and the lunar lander was designed, tested, and built, and used successfully in this seven-year period. Great success! Russia, however, failed with their N1 rocket after the tragic early death of Sergei Korolev. So they lost the race. They lost so badly that they never even landed cosmonauts on the moon. And how about Artemis, the mythological sister of the Apollo program? It is based on the previous constellation program, which was started in 2005. In 2009, President Obama put the constellation on hold since it didn't have enough funding. A year later, in 2010, Barack Obama proposed to stop the non-Orion parts of the constellation, the Ares launch vehicle, and initiated development of a new heavy launcher by 2015, at a cost of $6 billion and a planned crewed mission to Mars in 2030. So the Artemis program was started. The Senate, I mean the space launch system, was created, now on paper at least. Now we jump a mere seven years and arrive at the year 2017, when President Trump re-established the National Space Council and kept the plans ongoing from the Obama administration. Later that year, Donald Trump signed the Space Policy Directive 1, aiming humans to return to the moon and then go on to Mars, to enable human expansion across the solar system and to bring back to Earth new knowledge and new opportunities. It was at this time that the Lunar Gateway and Human Landing System programs were also put forward. Do you remember this? Constellation started in 2005, Artemis started in 2009, and in 2017, the US didn't even yet have a proper launch vehicle to send astronauts to the moon. They must have felt that the program was ridiculously slow compared to the first moon program. So 2019, 
Mike Pence announced that NASA's moon landing goal would be accelerated by four years for a planned landing in 2024. That's a little bit better. This way, Artemis would achieve returning to the moon in 14 years. Twice the time of the Apollo program. With modern technology, with new materials, with modern computers and advanced science, not a great success. Borat would not be pleased. But at least it's something. But wait, the story's not yet finished. In 2020, the House Appropriations Committee rejected the White House's requested funding increase, leaving the human landing system a tiny $3 billion short. So, partially because of this, NASA later chose only the SpaceX proposal, the Lunar Starship, as the planned lunar lander for the HLS. New president, new directives. Even though the Biden administration endorsed the Artemis program, they also emphasized that Earth's observation and climate studies are more important and NASA should primarily work on those. Already, as February rolled around, the acting NASA Administrator Steve Jerksik clarified that the 2024 lunar landing goal may no longer be a realistic target. Damn. That hurts. By not choosing the Blue Moon Lander, dear old Jeffy protested to this, and so whipped the lawyers of Sue Origin into action, attacking NASA and it caused another significant delay of the HLS program. Between April through November, NASA couldn't work on this project. The funding could not be transferred to SpaceX. Eventually, the judge dismissed the lawsuit and NASA won. So the current planned landing date is 2025. 20 years from the birth of the constellation, 15 years from the beginning of Artemis. Yet the latest scuttlebutt seems to be about the delay of the launch of Artemis 1 again. So even the 2025 landing is not yet sure. What? What's happening in China meanwhile? Here's something you might not have known about the Chinese space program. They also started it by utilizing their old ICBM weapons back from the 60s. China wanted to participate in the US-USSR space race, and so they started to put their first crewed space program together in 1963. And it was cancelled in 1971 because of political turmoil. The next more ambitious crewed spaceflight program was started in 1986 with the sci-fi-like name Astronautics Plan 863-2. We could say a numbered plan, not from outer space. That program did not send Chinese astronauts to space, but it evolved into Project 921-4. So some cool names for these programs. After the earlier China Aerospace Company was renamed to the current China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, CASC, in 1999, the first human-rated spaceship, the Shenzhou-1, made its first test flight without people on board. This saw Chinese space technology development accelerate. The Chinese spaceship, which is like a Russian Soyuz but about 10% bigger, brought Yang Li Wei, the first Taikonaut, to space and returned safely in 2001. Now let's see how many years were needed to send the first space station to Earth's orbit. For the US, it took 11 years to launch Skylab. For China, the Tiangong-1 successfully deployed in 2011, 10 years after Yang Liwei's flight. So not much difference in this sense, but in the meantime, China managed to send a probe to moon orbit in 2007. Chang'e-1 was operated until 2009, when it was directed to impact the lunar surface. In 2008, Taikonauts performed successful EVAs. Already in 2011, the CAS tried to send an orbiter to Mars. Yinghyo-1 could not leave Earth orbit because of the failure of the Russian launch vehicle. Instead of crying over spilled blocks, China sent the Chang'e-3 to the moon in 2013. This time, the probe successfully landed on the surface and unleashed the beast there. Beast? Like where? Find the rabbit? No, it is the rabbit. You two, the Jade Rabbit. With this feat, China became the third nation which could safely land on the moon. 2016 saw Tiangong-2, the second Chinese space station, flying around the Earth. And one year later, Chang'e-4 repeated the safety touchdown trick, but this time on the far side of the moon. And it delivered the Jade Rabbit's brother, the U-2-2-2. The small rover is still operating, and it found some gel-like material and a house-shaped rock too. For proper communication, the Chang'e 4's relay satellite was launched and sent to orbit the L2 Lagrange point of the Earth Moon system. This solution and landing on the so called Dark Side were both the first such achievements in the world. They even managed to return samples from the Moon with Chang'e 5, 
which was also another first for the Apollo program. The mission contained an autonomous docking in lunar orbit. If that's not enough, they completed the Beidou satellite navigation system and launched the Tianwen-1, sending it to Mars on their own Long March 5 rocket. Moreover, in 2021, it went to a Mars orbit and safely landed on the surface of the Red Planet, delivering the Zhurong rover. China became the third nation to achieve this, after the US and Russia. Closer to our mother planet, they started to build the Tiangong space station. No number this time. Currently orbiting Earth, it is being built and being habited continuously. It will be bigger and more capable compared to its predecessors. All these cool missions were achieved in a mere 20 years from the first flight of a Taikonaut. As you can see, China has very ambitious plans in space, as it was announced in their next five-year plan. But when they talk about the plans to become a space power, it's a bit worrisome as well. After Tianhe, the core module of the new Tiangong space station, they plan to complete building it this year. Juntian is going to be a space telescope and will fly in one orbit with Tiangong. Again, a first used method in the history of spaceflight. Taikonauts will live and research on the space station, but China wants Taikonauts on the moon as well. To prepare, Chang'e 6 will bring back samples from the strategically important polar regions, and Chang'e 7 will perform a precise soft landing there also. Chang'e 8 will even conduct research to test technologies for the construction of a Chinese lunar outpost. For the launch vehicle of their moon program, China is planning to build the Long March 9 rocket. This 103 meter tall rocket will be able to send 53 tons to the moon. And as if China was not agile enough in this field, they announced plans for cooperation with Russia. The International Lunar Research Station would be, or will be, the joint project of Roscosmos and CASC. A wide range of scientific research is planned to be executed, lava tube exploration, lunar chemistry, material studies, and in situ resource utilization, just to name a few of them. The Russians are also planning to bring their Angara heavy lift launcher to this process, and are sending a series of Luna probes like China with their Chang'e series. Based on all of these, we can be sure that China's space technology is developing extremely fast. At the same time, the US Artemis program seems to be slowing down. Why could this be? A strong centralized power is a big help if someone wants to proceed with a decades long program. In the US, the changing development directions and the changing administration will certainly not help a sustained effort to achieve something big in the longer term. Also, the financial background of the space programs in the two countries are essentially different. In the US, it's almost a work of art to ensure that the different decision maker organizations are providing the needed support for the projects. There were some people who did it very well. In China, if someone is in a high enough position and has a strong enough will, and we can definitely see examples of this, the funding of a long and expensive project is pretty much safe. And there are darker sides of the Chinese situation. Rocket first stages falling on cities, uncontrolled re-entry of other Chinese rocket stages, and the anti-satellite test which caused long-lasting danger in Earth's orbit. Though, to be fair, ASAT tests were performed by the US, by Russia, and by India as well. Anyway, we must admit the development of Chinese space technology is accelerating, whilst the Artemis doesn't seem to be quite running in the 90s. Who will win? We don't know yet. But the following years will be extremely fascinating. For us, for the friends of human spaceflight. So, I wish you all the best. Stay safe out there, say no to war, and on to the future. Already is Fabe. Fabe? With this feat, China became the third nation which could safe. Iran? China became the third nation to achieve this after the US and Russia. Oh, no, 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 no. China became the third nation. I didn't give you a Baran.